Well, I've just been doing a bit of filming in town, another Denby video. And I thought, I've got to go up the mental, haven't I? And I just arrived now, there's a belt of smoke coming from the back. So I don't know what that was about. It's gone now. I thought, oh no, metal's not on fire again. It was behind the trees there, it was belching up white smoke. But it's gone now. So yeah, just thought I would pop back to the mental, continue my 20 plus years. There's smoke there now. I don't think it's probably not the mental, it's probably coming from the back. So it looks like it's coming from the mental. It was belching before, but it's much more than that. But it does look like it's coming from the mental hat. The, back, the very back. Unless it's Jones Brothers probably burning something. Hey, it's my talk of Jones Brothers. There they are. I wonder if it's my mate, Mr. Security. Give us a wave. Huh. He always parks, seems to park up there. Anyway, security on the grounds. Yeah, it was only intended to be a 200 bedded hospital. But over the years it got so overcrowded, they had to add bits on and bits on. And by the 1950s, there was just under 1,500 patients in the place. And like I say, it was only intended to be 200. But uh, it was so overcrowded there, that the beds were so tightly packed together that the patients couldn't get in and out of the bed from the side. They to get in and out of the beds from the end or the foot of the bed. It was that packed there. And by the 18, up to the 1860s, there was not a single attendant in the hospital from the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. They literally just locked all the patients in and left them there. There was not an attendant from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. Um, they used to lock the, the ward doors. They used to lock the uh, corridor doors. They used to lock the outer doors. And as I say, there was no attendance. They, they literally just locked the patients in. And quite often on their opening up in the, the next day, or you know, in the morning at 6 a.m., they would find one or two patients. He's stopping. One or two patients would be dead. I thought it was one of my uh, stopping to have a chat. Anyway, yeah, they'd find one or two patients would be dead. So yeah, from 10, 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. He never has have an attendant in the place. And a lot of the... Hey, he's on the move now. <laughs> Give us a wave. Going on his travels. Yeah, a lot of the patients, though, they had jobs. They were, you know, put, they were put to work to while away their days. The men used to be on the farm or the gardens or joinery workshops. And the women would be in the, the, the kitchens or the sewing rooms and things like that. And those that couldn't work, um, they whiled away their hours in what was called the airing courts. And they were either side of the front buildings. There was an airing court there, and there was an airing court there. And what they were was walled off sections. There was a door leading out from the main buildings into the airing courts, and they were wall walled off. So they couldn't get actually into the grounds, the main grounds. And that's all they used to do all day is just wander around. But at least they were getting a bit of fresh air and a bit of sun and, you know, a bit, a bit of the sunlight on them and what have you. But yeah, that's what they used to do, the airing courts, the, the ones that, that couldn't work. And he goes on his travels, going around the back of the nurses home. So yeah, yeah, when you think it was uh, 1,000, just under 1,500 patients in the place. And as I said before, that's the... Uh, the isolation ward that was a hospital within a hospital that isolation hospital any of the patients he's coming back now any of the patients that had uh, contagious diseases and what have you he stopped he's clocked me now give us a wave um, they, yeah they were put into there into that building there as I say that was the isolation ward or isolation hospital it was a hospital within a hospital so yeah, I wonder if that's my mate, Mr. Security. We are yet to meet, our paths are yet to cross. So yeah, anyway, just thought I'd uh, do a, another little update of my 20 plus years. 
I've documented the mental. I've said it once and I'll say it again. 20 plus years. There he is. Give us a wave. Got his, where is he? There he is. Got his high vis on. It may be uh, Mr. Security, the one that leaves me, well, he left me a message in the fitness station to say that he was, how many, how many of the trespassers or intruders that he caught. So yeah, um, yeah, 1,500 or just under, and the beds were so tightly squashed together that the patients, you know, they couldn't get in, in and out. And before the gas works, which is here, that's the gas works there, the entire building was lit with candles and paraffin lamps, but then they, they built the gas works, which are there, and then got lit with gas then. And some of the patients, um, they used to work on the Astrid and the river, the, the other side, the other side there, and they used to manually pump water all day for the water supply for the mental. They used to manually pump it from the river Astrid. So yeah, he's going for his wonder. Anyway, that's uh, an update of my continuing my 20 plus years of documenting the mental. I've said it once and I'll probably say it a few more times. Right, I'm going. So yeah, if you're interested in the mental, any updates and anecdotes and stories and stuff and walkabout videos, it's all on my channel. You want to check it out. So. Right, I'm going and I'll see you next time.